Hello everyone. I just wanted to reach out to all of you via recording to give you an update on 2019 accomplishments and talk about some goals for 2020 and begin the discussion for the Aquatic Invasive Species Program moving forward. So we're going to roll through about a 22 point uh, slide. I'll try to keep it short and if you have questions do contact me either by email or phone. So our first slide will talk about budgeting. Um, came in well under budget. As you can see from the spreadsheet on the left, 87,620 was our total expenses for the year. We had 131,158 to spend. Most of this came from the fact that uh, we didn't have, we weren't able to execute on the one grant application that we did have come in. And also the fact that we had a, a couple of savings here and there. Um, our watercraft inspection supervisor, we had a conservation corps person uh, fortunately, we had some other streams of funding that they were still able to complete the work. We just didn't have to spend the AIS dollars on that. So all that savings will roll over uh, to the next year. We also have our new infestation response plan reserve fund still available. Uh, we did spend uh, about $800 on that this year, and we were we'll able we'll be able to replenish that. Uh, here's the breakdown for 2019 expenses, which you saw in the spring. Uh, so planning the work back to our plan that we developed back in February of 2019. Um, I know this is a lot of words. I just wanted you to be able to reference it and we can go through some of uh, the results that I added on the right hand uh, new column on the right hand side. So Objective one uh, on prevention, so 1.1, our strategy is to, to use existing data and collect new data. Uh, part of that was the completion of the formula data. I actually have some good news on that. MACERC has taken that up due to some legislation that was passed in the last session with funding, additional funding to basically revamp the entire watercraft inspection program. So um, I know this will be a little bit disappointing to some of you that there aren't going to be any major changes to uh, 2020, and we'll, we'll get there when we talk about 2020. But MACERC is working on some really interesting stuff, including some of that formula that Bob Haight, uh, we were working on with Bob Haight to decide what inspectors should go where. Um, they are creating, they're working with a, an application developer to be able to make uh, an interactive map that you can find connections and really dig deep. It's it's kind of that big data idea where we're going to have uh, the ability to manipulate really large data sets um, and do some really interesting stuff and decide how we best want to spend our, our inspectors time. Um, the next one uh, the trained ambassadors and, and volunteers. I did not have any this year, uh, so we can discuss whether that we want to continue that in 2020 and or if that should still be a goal. Um, collect watercraft inspection data or trap accounts on all boat launches. I had a camera out at Bald Eagle and got some really good information there. We're getting some long-term trend data there on um, traffic movement and hopefully that can be extrapolated out, added to the 1.1.1 um, with MACERC. Hopefully that will we'll be able to add to that data, that larger data set and kind of correct for some of that data. Um, Bald Eagle uh, had the camera data, but we also had uh, watercraft inspection program data from 12 of the 17 lakes. Uh, thanks to some partners, we had more robust data this year, so we got a little bit more information on when and where the bulk of um, boats are coming in. 
Speaking of the watercraft inspection program, uh, we had 4,168 hours of inspections was the best number that I could come up with. That includes DNR, uh, water guards, and um, our own internal Ramsey County interns and myself. Over 500 decons um, and right around 12,006 inspections, which is a definite increase from last year. Also this year, we were able to get the sheriff on board with doing patrols. Uh, I did a lot of talking to people this year, explaining the laws, and next year he'll be more comfortable with writing violations and some other follow-up that I'll get to when we talk about 2020. So here's that formula again from Bob Haight. Um, I was hoping to have a picture of that application that May Circuit is developing by now, but they, they haven't released that. And I will let you know as soon as we have it. Here's some pictures of the decon unit that we have now. Um, I'm hoping to get more use out of this this year, but we had, we had really decent use. Um, our numbers don't quite reflect it because a lot of the ones that we were, we were learning as we were going along. So we were more focused on getting the decon right doing the customer service part of this, getting people to educated on what the decon unit is rather than always making sure that we were 100% on entering that data into the, the watercraft inspection program. Next year, we're gonna be much better at that. We'll be much more prepared. So again, inspections, uh, here's the breakdown. I won't read through all this. You can read through all that. But that is an average across the board of nearly three inspections per hour. Um, the goal for the Ramsey County program was to be above that three inspections per hour. And I believe we achieved that. Um, the, the fact that we had partners that were funding additional hours brought that down because we were doing inspections in less than ideal times. And also that includes the DNR inspections that they're there for 10 hours straight, no matter what. Mostly white bear, so that didn't, I don't imagine it dragged it down too much, but it's still, um, their averages might go down a little bit. So now on to early detection. Um, we had, a great story this year with McCarran's a uh, 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 volunteer wise. The inf infestation there was actually found by a trained volunteer. Uh, so really unfortunate that we had another infestation, but um, it goes to show you the value of, of volunteers. And that was one we were able to react to quickly. This person did all the right protocols got it to the DNR in time, DNR got it to me within a matter of days, um, and then the follow-up occurred. Um, professional inspections of all the boat launches, we did all of those. And again, a uh, great story there that of how doing what we do with early detection is working, where our professional scuba diver found a single zebra mussel in Long Lake on Sunday, I was out there Monday, DNR was out there within a few days following that. And um, it just goes to show how all these pieces are important, all the people involved are important, and we need to continue to make a more robust early detection system. Um, yeah, I think that's all we need to say about that. Each inspector will complete this search. This was not, I was not able to negotiate this into the contract last year with water guards. So what I'm going to do then is have our interns do that this year. It's, uh, it's just easier and I have more control over the quality assurance piece of this. So There'll still be more early detection than there was in previous years. It just won't be done through water guards. 
and then completion of the eDNA for zebra mussels. This is really exciting. There's a lot of good stuff. We ended up partnering with the U of M Genomics Lab. They took it on all pro bono work, and they're continuing to, now that we have the zebra mussel genome mapped, they're, they're continuing to try to find more specific probes so that it's hyper-specific to zebra mussels. We don't get those false positives. They're also testing the gingira probes that we used last year and seeing if maybe those will work just fine. So John Mansky and the U of M Genomics Lab and myself are continuing to work together on creating a protocol with the hope that within a few years, anybody could scoop up a liter of water in a sterile bottle and send it off to the lab and they would process it and tell you with a reasonable uh, amount of confidence uh, that there was no zebra mussel DNA found in that sample. Now, again, this is kind of like Velger toes. You're, you might, at low levels, you're shooting for needle in a haystack, but um, I think it could be a really good tool. They're developing this as, as a business model and, and a service that could be provided. We also did some other surveys, uh, survey work with Phragmites, and I also just learned about 10 minutes ago that we received a grant for uh, nearly $50,000 from the Department of Ag to treat Phragmites across the metro. So I, I think this is one of our big emerging invasive species issues writ large. Um, it is an emergent aquatic, so you'll find it um, on shorelines across the county. Right now, white bear probably has the biggest population of non-native Phragmites. But we'll continue to watch out for this one because this is, this is one that could definitely spread and is uh, definitely a nuisance recreationally and environmentally. Uh, new infestation response, McCarran's was again another good example of, uh, of reacting to a newfound infestation quickly. We got out there in a few days. Uh, unfortunately, it was the, the infestation was lake-wide. About every 10 objects we picked up, you'd find zebra mussels all along the shoreline. Uh, but we learned again with that new infestation response plan how better to coordinate with the DNR to get that information to the lake owners and then get it out to uh, the wider public through the DNR and get that follow-up out there as quickly as we possibly can so that if there is a chance for treatment, we can, we can make it. And it, here's the long lake zebra mussel that was found. This is another one like Johanna that's uh, really odd to me. Single zebra mussel found, we followed up with uh, DNR scuba searches. I did wading searches. Interns turned over rocks. We looked the whole shoreline all around that area. This was actually found on the bunks at the boat launch. Um, then we had Steve McComas with Blue Water Science followed up with some more searches in that same area around the boat launch and also other areas around the lake and still found nothing. So Bald Eagle, Johanna, same things were, they're present. We just don't know how and where and when, and we'll continue to follow up with that in 2020 and, and monitor these. Here's, a, here's how you search, turn over things, get in the water, wade, turn over rocks, see what happens. This is on Johanna. This is one of our follow-up searches there. Um, Follow-up on Johanna, we found a s two more um, about thumb size zebra mussels. They're very large in Johanna, but not a whole lot of them. Did a more scuba searching, uh, more searching here. If they're not widespread, they are just very uh, Community-based social marketing training, this is going to continue. This is going to be a piece of the education and outreach part of um, 
our goals from 2019 and into 2020. Um, there will be grants coming out with this and we want to be prepared. So I already have uh, contract negotiations in place with a local educator that we have used for other education and outreach pieces, forums, things like that. And she's going, she has training in CVSM already. She's going to work up some, some programs that we can do for AIS and take those on and hopefully leverage our dollars to get additional dollars in 20. So uh, on to the changing behaviors, uh, the tool stations, um, a plan for each bolt launch and maintenance. I wasn't able to get striping in this year um, just because it was decided by the time spring rolled around, we had a weird spring didn't get it done then. You don't want to do it in fall because then it's got all winter of maintenance. But I have a PO in right now and a contract in hand to get the striping done at all the boat launches. I also have the uh, three tool stations at Bald Eagle, White Bear, and Turtle as our pilot studies. I think they went really well. Um, not a whole lot of damage anyways to these tool stations, so I'll continue to do those. My goal for next year will be to uh, create more of those. I have, the, I have the tools, I have the equipment, I have everything on hand. Just need to put them out there in spring. Um, pilot program that uh, for a 24-hour education piece. We tried to get eyelids out at Turtle um, it, with partnership with the association. Was not able to get that done just due to some contracting issues. Um, so we, we weren't able to get that. That, that was going to be our 24-hour monitoring piece. The good news is, is some things are coming together for a larger 100% uh, inspection or kind of self-inspection program through some work that CD3, the people that make CD3 are doing, and um, negotiations that I'm having within the county um, on how to make this look and how to develop the app. Uh, things are looking promising at this point, so I won't I won't uh, promise anything in particular, but I'm I'm liking where it's headed. Uh, violations sent to law enforcement. We had a few zebra mussel violations this year, mostly on white bear, you know, people coming from white bear back to white bear, but still the inspectors followed the protocol, took the pictures, followed up with the conservation officers. And there was, um, there was some good, um, good follow up there. Uh, the, on the last point, 1.2.3 about the grant. Again, we only had one proposal and that kind of fell through. So uh, we'll re-release that this year in the coming months. Um, just working on some other contract negotiations, which I'll go over in length. So there's our pilot station at White Bear. That's a standalone that we did. I think a lot of the boat launches we're going to be able to utilize existing um, uh, signage in instead of creating our own tool station standalone tool station so that should hopefully go a lot quicker either way if we have to put a station in we'll, we'll do there's turtle lakes we just put it right on the sign seems to work out a lot better um 2.2 developing the NERP to optimize the reach and impact. Uh, so keep the NERP funding at 50,000. We only spent about $1,000 on Long Lake. No problem maintaining that balance. Uh, creating a budget, including maximum amount. This is, this is something I'm still working on. Uh, kind of leads to number three, uh, same reason I didn't get this done. Completion of the bottom hardness. Our GIS person left in September, so I had to take over a lot of those duties and I wasn't able to, to get this done, but that should be something that I will have ready by the time new infestation responses needed in spring. 
Here's the bottom hardness output. We did get a few of these in. There's just some ground truthing and this is all from sonar data. We need some ground truthing and uh, other information to make sure that this is accurate for all the lakes and then uh, need to work on getting data from all of the lakes in the county. Uh, management, completion of the bioassays. This was superseded by the DNA work that turned into a much larger project than we had planned. Uh, basically, we just planned on doing what we did last year and resubmitting new samples to a lab and we ended up developing all new probes and working with the U of M genomics lab on the protocol. So this one we'll have to table to 2020. Um, get lakes genotype for the Eurasian milfoil. Rice Creek Watershed District was providing the samples. This project is ongoing and it's kind of been stalled from what I understand uh, by some funding and grant hiccups, but the work is there, it's still going on, and um, give it a few years, we'll have some really robust research on this. And then creating a cooperative weed management program similar uh, with MOUs from cities and associations. I, I've been making some headways with the cities and watershed districts, creating those partnerships, helping people understand it's a lot more of an uphill battle helping people understand why aquatic invasive species prevention is important. So this is going to be more of a long-term goal than um, I originally expected. Here's some of the support that we've gotten from cities and other entities. There's several more, but there's a snippet of them anyways. Uh, seeking partnerships in funding. Um, MinFRAG has been a great uh, cooperative um, cooperative program that kind of led to this Metro Wide Phragmites Consortium. EDNA with U of M has been wonderful in the Eurasian Milfoil Project with MACERC. I can say that's ongoing. I continue to talk with the, the leaders of that that program and as soon as I get data, we'll pass it along. But good things are happening. Uh, presenting a policy for the cities so the cities can adopt to fund treatment. Again, uh, it's a lot more work on the front end to explain why this is a problem and why they should be funding it than I originally thought. So this will, this will continue. Um, Innovative grant. We talked about this one pr proposal presented. The and the contract negotiations at this point have kind of fallen through, and um, time is better spent on some other things. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. So here's the eDNA. Here's what they're uh, what they're doing. Um, I know this is kind of dense. It's just a great visual of of how they're getting to that point where they can. They can tell if there's a DNA hit. Um, here's what we're doing in the short term. We're trying to move from DDPCR to QPCR. So that's, that's slowing down some things. We want to run the gingiris, the gingira probes and do some um, replicability studies on that one. So with all those accomplishments and challenges in 2019. I'd like to build off of that in 2020. Um, so I wanted to throw a couple of things out there for discussion and some build upon some things in 2019. So let's just dive right into it. For prevention, um, more enforcement from the sheriff uh, and that will include uh, writing more violations on uh, uh, boats coming in out of boat launches with weeds or animals still on them, plants or animals still on them. Uh, but that will also include an agreement that we have with the DNR to follow up on zebra mussel violations. So in the past, 
those zebra mussel violations, if there was a, if there were zebra mussels found by an inspector coming into a lake, that got kicked to a conservation officer, and uh, they would follow up. Um, but we wouldn't always know what happened. So we're going to take more local control over that. The DNR will kick those violations to us if we don't already hear from our inspectors, which we expect them to contact me. That's part of our protocol. I will contact the sheriff, pass it along. They will follow up with that person and then they will follow back up with me and let me know how that was resolved. So we're going to see more folk control, more enforcement. Tool stations at all the launches. So just like you saw in the pictures, I want to do some more of those at all the boat launches. Uh, I already have the tools. I uh, already have the sites mostly picked out and ready to go. We just need to make a few adjustments here and there, and, and that's on a site-by-site -site basis. Also with that, I want to pilot an automatic verbal reminder. So with the spoon launch and the association around that chain of lakes, and uh, special thanks to John James on that one, we are, uh, received a... Uh, outdoor speaker that we're going to try piloting it's it's automated so it's it's a it's a sensor on a speaker that when a boat comes in it'll trip that sensor and it'll say something like welcome to x lake make sure please make sure that your boat is clean drained and free of plants and animals before launching and we can put other messages on there um, like if we know a certain lake has a lot of traffic from an infested waters, we can say, please remember that White Bear Lake is infested waters. If you have just come from there, make sure that your boat is dry for five days. We can do a couple of different things with it. So we're going to pilot that and, and work with that. I'm working with the electricians here and, and some of the carpenters to see if we can't make something ourselves because I haven't seen anything that's existed. Uh, Inspections. Inspections will continue uh, with the fundings about the same level as last year, $25,000 from the Ramsey County funding and to water guards. Additional partner funding will supplement that. And uh, then we'll have our own interns. That's going to be a, a separate line item, but we'll have our own interns and I will be out there checking on the people and doing my own inspections and, and, and helping people be more effective. But we are going to have to make some adjustments with McCarran's and Long now being infested. And we can talk a little bit about how those hours look, where we take from uh, to maintain that right around that 1400 hour a year mark. Decon unit, more use on the decon unit. I'm trying to figure out a different way that if I can't use it, interns can use it. If interns can't use it, then can somebody else be using it? So we'll try to get more hours on that, especially outbound on the infested waters. Uh, more support of Maserx, uh interactive map and uh, for the inspector placement. They have a couple of exciting things coming out. As I mentioned, they have a, uh, an the, the legislature has directed them to just completely revamp the water scra watercraft inspection program. And I'm sitting on a, a kind of a guidance board that, uh, that they're going to have to look at how to best do that. Do you, you know, do you completely redo it or do you look at revamping it, the, the existing program? There's, there's a lot of talk around that, so um, there'll be more to come on that. Uh, redoubling efforts on our volunteer inspectors. Do we need to do that? Do we give that up? Uh, I don't know. That's where I'd like some feedback. Car counts, same thing. If that data is going to be used eventually by MACERC, maybe we can partner with them and get some more robust data. Maybe we can partner more with the parks end of things as they want to see use data as well. Uh, 
there's some there's some options there, but we should talk about car counts and whether it's worth the effort to to collect that data and analyze uh, beyond the watercraft inspector data. This is say car counts with a with a with a camera. Also, exciting news on the CD3 contract. I got clearance from our uh, IT services that this will not need to go under their review. So I am just waiting on the, it's going to be a cooperative contract with Hennepin County. So Hennepin County just needs to get that cleared from their procurement people. And hopefully CD3 will be an option for 2020. And there'll be some cost sharing involved with that through the grant program that we had last year. More details to come on that. I need that contract in hand before I can promise anything. For early detection, uh, intern, volunteer, and professional searches, again, same as last year. I think we're actually doing pretty good with this, so I don't foresee too many changes. If you have anything you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, best practices, continue the best practices. John Mansky will do the Velager toes. Settling plates that associations are doing, those are fantastic. Keep me updated on those. If you have questions, bring me samples, send me pictures. Always happy to look at those. And then continued support of the eDNA tool development. I'd like to maybe drop a few other goals so we can spend more time on this because I think we really are on the leading edge of the eDNA tool. And between that and the visual searches, I, I think we're doing more than just about anybody else out there. Uh, and then in terms of management, continue to partner with MACERC. They're the ones with the capacity to do real scientific research on EDM, e, um, Eurasian water milfoil genotyping and new chemical herbicide applications. Um, and they're, they're the ones that should be leading that sort of research and disseminating that out to the wider world anyways. Uh, and then obviously support applications for DNR, um, the Aquatic Invasive Plant Management Grants that came out. I sent that to you all. You should have all received that. That, I believe, is already closed by the time you hear this. Uh, but if you need any assistance with follow-up on that, delineations, I don't think I can actually do the delineations. I won't have the capacity for that, but I can certainly help make sure that those happen and, and give you some directions on what the DNR wants to see. If there's other things that you want to suggest for 2020, rewrites of the 2019 goals, new goals, if we want to drop any, I am happy to hear those. But uh, I just wanted you to listen to this so you had an idea. Everybody's coming in with the same information. And when we do have a meeting, then we can focus on 2020 goals and, and good discussion. Uh, rather than you hear me droning on in, in front of you all again. But always happy to answer questions. Uh, shoot me an email. Uh, send, a, Give me a call anytime we can talk more. Um, always happy to get comments back and, and, and hear from the wider group. So with that, I will send out an email in the next few weeks to get us on the page with the get us all on the same page with a date for an actual meeting and get together with an agenda. Thanks so much for listening. And please, again, let me know if you have any questions.